Now, a couple times I heard him say, yes, they trained for the left hook. You do have to look at round 7, 10, and 11 and wonder where that training took place. How much did you train when you got hit every single time? Short I was number one. Michael Spinks at one uh, 65 was number one. Leon Spinks at a one, one, one. Big Sugar Ray Phillips. Yes, sir. How are you doing, sir? All right. Nice it is to meet a you. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Always honored to meet you. Now, Big Sugar Ray. Sugar Ray Robinson. Did that have an influence on your name? Yes. Well, you know, Sugar Ray Robinson. He was raised around Detroit, Chicago, and had aunties he used to date back in the days. And then my pops, he was a boxer in Chicago. Yeah. So I always liked that name, Sugar Ray. Yes. And then my name was already Ray, so we just put the sugar on top of it. Uh, I was young great. and I used to be real good looking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seemed to be. Let me ask you a question as far as being young. Uh, I was told that you had been boxing since the age of 10. What got you into boxing? No, sir, I'm sorry. I've been boxing since the age of seven. Ah, seven. I yes, sir. Lucky that. seven. <laughs> Lucky, Lucky seven. seven. Uh, like I said, my father, he was a boxer. His, my uncles and them was boxers. I had other great uncles. They know Jack Johnson from Galveston, Texas and everything. So everybody back then is either the cotton field or box. Oh, okay. And back then you couldn't, you know, back in them days, you couldn't hardly play no baseball, no football. Boxing was the way out to get off. Amateur boxing, uh, the family members, or did some of them go professional? No, they say, well, they, they just stayed amateur. None of them yes. never went professional because they didn't have the right guidance to go professional. They could have made it in professional, but you have to have the right people on your team to make it. Speaking of amateur, at the Golden um, Gloves level, I heard you were pretty much a monster when it came to the stats. I appreciate that, sir. I love what I did. I didn't think a living human being could whoop me in boxing. Be truthful with you, sir. I'll, majority of my fights was open fights. Not I turned open when I was like 12, 13, 14 years old. You could turn open when you, whenever you wanted to. Back, it's all the stuff we did back then is all illegal today. The, the gloves, the wrapping of the hands with tapes that like bricks that make us punch drunk. Yeah. That's why a lot of my friends is in the graveyard right now. Kenny Norton, Joe Frazier, Muhammad Ali, they're in the graveyard. And I could go on and on. Aaron Pry, I could go on and on. Michael Dokes, all them world champions, they're in the grave right now. Because, man, we fought back then. We fought in little eight-ounce gloves. If you weighed under 147 pounds, you fought in six-ounce gloves. But your hands was wrapped like bricks. Tape, skin yeah. to skin. See, you can wrap it in my hands right now. I could knock a hole in that, knock a hole in that tin wall right now. So bare fisting being as dangerous as it is, people knew how dangerous that was. That's right. But having those wraps the way they were and the gloves that were smaller made it more intense, and, even more and so. The tape. Than See, it's fist. like, it, like it, they put that tape on there. They yes. put the tape. Like a it's pass. There you go, yes. sir. It's illegal today. To do the tape, fold it over, fold it over, fold it over, then come back through here, come back through here, skin the skin tape. It's all illegal today. Yes. But back in our day, they, they, they didn't know referees was punch drunk. Get him, get him, keep, keep hitting him, because he didn't got beat up, yes. so he wants you to get beat up. Well, let me ask you a question as far as your amateur fight. Uh, who actually trained you? Uh, I had a guy in Mental Wells, Texas, named Danny Smith. Mm -hmm. He was a great trainer. He's an old veteran. He trained me a lot. I had my cousin, Bobby Singleton. He passed away. They trained me a lot. And they used to get a lot of tips from different other old trainers back in the day. I've, I've always tried to seek knowledge about boxing, wherever I would be. I tried to get with the best trainers I could. What were your stats back then when you were in amateur fighting? What do you mean? How many fights did you actually Ooh, fight we, and win man, versus I, lose? I had over 500 amateur and professional fights. Ain't no telling how many amateurs. See, back then, a lot of people don't realize I fought Wichita, Kansas. I fought Kansas City, Missouri. I fought Chicago. I fought all through uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Oklahoma City with a guy named Pat O'Grady. Now, I fought back in there in the, in the, in the 50s, like 58, 59, 60. Fought yes. back in, the, in them days. They didn't care. They put us in there. Bang, 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 bang. Fought down in uh, what you call the, the bottom of uh, Oklahoma, down there around 
Henrietta, Oklahoma, around uh, where all the big rodeos used to be in Henrietta, yeah. Oklahoma. They had us man just fly. They would love it. The fans and them, they drank that beer and just yes. let us get in there and beat each other to death. They didn't care. They didn't care. So it was still under the guise of amateur boxing, yeah. but it was it was almost at the level of professional boxing. They, you know what they used to call it when we was open? Call it semi-pros. See, when, semi when I was 14, 15, 16, I sparred with nothing but top, top professional fighters. Amateurs couldn't even spar with me. Now, your weight class. I what? fought, and I fought, I, I started out at like, 130, 134, went to 139, which is 140 now. 147, then went up to 156, then went to 165, 175, and then kind of retired. I was working with the heavyweight champion. Should have been, should have been the heavyweight champion of the world. Listen to me real quick. His name is Ike Abuchi, mm -hmm. a guy named Curtis Coach used to be the welterweight champion of the world. Yes. He the one brought me. He said, Sugar Ray, you work with heavyweights good because he seen me work with. One of Paul's fighters named Randy Stevenson and Joe Coach He said, man, you still got it? He said, come in 89, I was going to make a comeback as a cruiserweight. I heard you were going to the Olympics. What I, actually happened? That? I heard that statistically. I appreciate that. That there was no one that could have beat you. If you had gone to the Olympics, you would have came back with gold. I would have come back what with What exactly you. happened? Well, what happened, sir? I just said to you. I was the number one amateur in the country. Yes. And you had to beat me to get on the team. Yes. It ain't like I had to make the team. You had to beat me. You had to beat me to get on the Pan American wow. Game teams. Wow. You had I was the number one fighter. You can Google it, yes. it's in Ring magazine. I can show yes. you some copies to show you where I was the number yes. I was number one. Michael Spinks at one uh, sixty-five was number one. Leon Spinks at uh, one, 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 one seventy-eight. Uh John Tate at at heavyweight, Ray Leonard at 139, Clint Jackson at 147. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had to beat us to get on the team. Now, for the Olympics, it would have been easy for you to go to the Olympics and come back with a goal, but something strayed you off of that path. What exactly yeah. was that something? Well, let's see. How should you say it? Con me got in my ear. Ah, sure. Man, we, we, we'll give you a little money here. We'll give you this. We'll give you a little new Lincoln to drive. You know, I'm used to yes. driving them putt-putts. <laughs> give you a new Lincoln to drive with W.O. Bankson and all that. Man, we'll give you this this money right here, yes. man. Man, man, forget about that pro stuff, man. I mean, forget about that amateur. Make some money, man. It's time for you to make money, man. You, it's time for make money. So I thought about it. I thought about it. And People kept calling and telling me, Sir, don't do it, man. Go on to the Olympics, man. Go to the Olympics. Yeah. Go to the Olympics, man. Had one of, one of my trainers named Papa Joe Barrentes. Mm -hmm. He was a big time trainer in Fort Worth, Texas, named jo Papa Joe Barrentes. He said, Man, I don't have enough money to keep you from not going. He said, Ray, man, I'm telling you, man, if you can hold out, mm -hmm. hold out for just 10 more months, 12 more months. The Olympics will be here, man. You'll go to Pan American Games, win them. You'll come back, you'll go to the Olympics and win them. You picked to win already. You picked to win the Olympics. But so I, you were on the the uh, you were under the understanding that you might be able to go to the Olympics and then come back. Looks like we're running out of time. Hey, we're running out of time right now, but we shall be back after this commercial break. Jason, let's go see your room. What do you think? We kept it a little spare, so you can decorate it how you like. Dinner! Hello? Excellent. Soccer is fun. Yeah, I saw you guys out there. We're in the back room. We're in the back room. We're in the back room. Yeah! Oh, I thought you were on my team. Wait, I don't know what you said. Even if it means sacrificing everything. If you have only one hand, don't just watch football, play. And if you're a girl from Compton, become the greatest athlete ever. Yeah, that's more like it. 
So don't ask if your dreams are crazy. Ask if they're crazy enough. We are back with the champion. Let me ask you this. Let's go ahead and finish up. When you were on your way to go to the Olympics. Okay. Was there someone that tried to tell you not to make that decision to go pro, to go ahead and go to the Olympics, finish the Olympics, and then try yeah. your hand at professional You know, fighting? it was several people that was in my ear, but I just wouldn't listen. Paul, he don't realize he was really in my ear. Mm -hmm. Paul seen me fight on the amateur pro card. He used to put on, it's illegal today, but the used to, amateurs used to fight on pro cards. I used to come from Mineral Wells, Texas over here to fight for, fight the top amateur, any kind of top amateur, light heavyweight, heavyweight. I didn't care. I know he couldn't beat me. And I would fight for Paul was promoting the fights. He was promoting professional fights here in Dallas in 72, 73, 74, like that. And I was an amateur, but I was a top amateur fighter. Yeah. And I would fight on pro amateur cards. And Paul always kind of said, Mr. Percival. Mr. Okay. Percival always said, yep, yep. If you, you win that gold medal, ain't mm -hmm. no looking back. You yes. win that gold, Papa Joe Barrentes, you win that gold medal, Sugar Ray, and you the one, you one of the number one amateurs in the country. Yes. They like, I had to make the team. I was already on the team. Yeah. Yeah, Manion Stewart was our national Golden Glove coach. Manion Stewart was out of Detroit. Yeah. And it, he took us to fight the Cubans. The right. They couldn't beat me. So you, history showed that you went ahead and decided to go into professional profession. boxing. Yeah, yeah. So who'd you face? Well, uh, it's several of them in there, but none of them could beat me. I was 12 and 0 when I fought Hagelin. Hagelin was 36 and 0 or 36 and 2 when I fought him and yeah. fought him on like a 20 foot. And I fought him really on a 72 hour notice, mm -hmm. but they notified him. And I said, yeah, I had some guys named Al Braverman and Patty Flood say Sugar Ray. And I was with a guy named Johnny Boudreaux. He was one of the number two, number three heavyweights in the world. He said, man, come on and sign with these guys, man. Come on, man. Let's go ahead and get this fight with Hagler. I, I didn't think nobody could beat me. Yeah. I mean, I just didn't feel like no living human being could beat me. At that time. So what happened during that fight? And can you go back to that time, the Hagler fight? Well, Paul told me. He said, well, I said, Paul needs to get cooked. Come up here with me. He said, okay. He said, what I'm going to do, I'm going to. Bring the water, I'm, because they're going to poison you. He said, yeah. Hagler can't beat you, Sugar Ray. He said, Hagler can't beat you. He said, they're going to steal this fight from you. I said, okay. So we all meet him and Curtis Coast. We, we flew to Boston. Yeah. They got up there, and sure enough, we had our own water. We had everything. And Hagler, Hagler's people, the Panacho brothers, they had been having Hagler since he was amateur. So they told Hagler. Man, we don't know. This is another guy. He run out on the fight. He didn't want to fight Hagler. That's why I come in to fight Hagler. Mm -hmm. He ran out. And I say today, I come in and fought Hagler on a 72-hour notice. And I was boxing. Paul said, boxing, 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 boxing. You know, Curtis, you done showed me how to, you know, keep a left-hander. You, you, he stand like this. So you, you keep your left foot. Outside his outside his right foot, because if not, you get caught. Bam, yeah. down the line. So they, you know, showed me all the little tricks and different things. Yeah. So I said, okay, okay, okay. So we was going talking as we go, because I had several other. I beat several other southpaws at the same time. Mm -hmm. So when I got in there with Hagler, I didn't have no fear for. I see me and Hagler was in the nationals together back yeah. in the day, seventy two, seventy three. So I so I had zero. I had zero fear for him. Zero. Oh, just respect. He's a man like I'm a man. He put his pants on one leg at a time like I do every day. So I, I, I didn't have no fear for another human being in that boxing ring. Mm -hmm. Had zero fear. And so, because we was all rated right there together. Me, him, Michael Spinks, Leon Spinks, John Tate. All of us come through that Ray Leonard. All of us come, Aaron, all of us come through right there together. Mm -hmm. So we know each other. They ain't like Man, you fighting this guy, man, you don't know nothing about it. I know everything about Hagler. I seen yes. him fight, because seen him fight right before I, in the Nationals, we'd be sitting in cheers like this. Now, you up, now I'm up. You up, you I'm up. 
So we, we, we know each other. When you, if you go back to your professional wrestling, your professional boxing, excuse me. Okay. In your professional boxing years, what to you is the greatest fight that you ever had? Just to be honest with you, sir, I'll say it was, it was against Hagler. See, Hagler was going to open up all kind of doors for me, and I knew it would have if I could have just got past, got past Hagler. But Hagler, me and him remained friends. He said, I'm going to just tell you the truth, Sugar Ray. We at Caesar's Palace. I never will forget it. He said, Leonard fought him in 87. I fought him in 77. Mm -hmm. I said, Leonard... And he beat Leonard. I commentated the fight for 13 point 10 the tickets here in Dallas. He beat Leonard. But they get a fight to Ray Leonard on the spit. They said, how can you take a championship, champion's fight, and you don't even knock him down? You're running like a little scary rabbit. He said, Ray Leonard kept grabbing me, man. He said, man, I thought he wanted me to make love to him. <laughs> I mean, see, you know, I, you know, we all come through together. Yeah. I put Ray Leonard right now and knock him out. So it, it don't make no difference what I say. We'll see each other at Caesar's Palace, see each other, yeah. maybe to Mike Tyson play. When it comes to professional uh, uh, boxing, there are a lot of dangers that the boxers have to face. What are some of those injuries that people have to understand, like young people that want to go into professional boxing, but they don't understand all that they're going to have to face physically See, when they go into that sport. A lot of people, boxing is not like football, it's not like baseball, it's not like, boxing is one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Like, I'll be running right now in that rain. Oh, yeah, five miles, seven miles in Mount Charleston, in, in Colorado Springs. I'll be running right now. Uh, coach, the 10 below zero. It's up to you. Yes. It's up to you. We have to go to a commercial break. <laughs> but after that, we'll be right back. Stand in life that there will be hardships. No matter who you are, no matter how talented you are, how beautiful you are, everything that you struggle in is there to create progress. Start where you are, use what you have, and do what you can. The only person that could define you is you. And if you stay the course and put your mind and your heart into something, you literally, truly can do anything you want. Don't stop at high school. Go further. Let everyone know you want a better future. Better life. And they better make room. Dad? Just one minute, okay? Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Okay, we're back with Big Sugar Ray. Before we went to commercial break, we were talking about the dangers in the, the sport of uh, professional boxing. What are some of the, the dangers that young people coming up, amateurs that are interested in going pro, what are some of the things that they really need to look out for? Well, first they need a good coach mm -hmm. who know what he's talking about to help them kids, to show them the jabs, the right hands, the left hooks teach them the proper way about boxing just instead of just out there slapping. You have to have a, he have to have some kind of experience as coach does or he been around other good fighters to be able to be, to, to be able to be a coach or a trainer. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, they just throw them in there. But a fighter, it take one punch mm -hmm. and you may not wake up. Mm -hmm. One punch. And you have to show the fighter, you have to tell the youngsters, I want you to run two miles a day. I want you to do 50 sit-ups. I want you to do 100 sit-ups. I want you to do 100 push-ups. I want you to do 100 pull-ups. See, you, you have to make your body like this brick, like yes. that brick wall out there. Yeah. You have to have your body solid mm -hmm. and your mind have to be You can't 
You can't say, well, man, I'm smoking with a little dope. Uh, yeah. Man, don't nobody know it. Oh, yeah, you can fool everybody, but you can't fool your shadow and you can't fool God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And your body. <laughs> you can't. It's going to respond. You, you is going to respond. Whatever you bring it's in, gonna, yeah. that is what's going to come right. out. That's right. And that's what I tell a lot of these young fighters today. You can fool me, but yes. you can't fool yourself. Exactly. You can fool your grandpa, your dad, your, your, but you can't fool yourself. So you know what you did. So during your illustrious years in professional boxing, who are some of the A celebrities that you have uh, been able to keep contact with even to this day? Oh man, from I used to be in contact with Will Chamberlain, Hollywood, Henderson, you name them. See, I lived in Las Vegas 22 years. I, oh, I wow. met Don, so I used to live in Lang City too for like seven years. Yes. I lived in the Trump Plaza, Plaza right next Don't to Larry Holmes. Ah. Yeah. So Donald Trump, he promoted the Mike Tyson and Michael Spinks fight in 1988. He gave him like $30 million a piece for 91 seconds. Wow. And not boom, Tyson. <laughs> Spinks said, thank you, sir. I don't want to box no more. He never fought again since then. A lot of people don't realize that. Oh, wow. Michael Spinks never fought mm -hmm. no more when Mike Tyson knocked him out in 91 seconds. Wow. Butch Lewis was the manager. He was a friend of mine. Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali, Ali was one of the, he had Angelo Dundee was his main man. And then Bundini Brown, they like, we'd been in a gym called Johnny Taco's Gym. Johnny Taco's Gym was a world famous gym. If Johnny Taco didn't like his small, he wouldn't, but all the world, Rocky Marciano, Sonny List, mm -hmm. all the champions come to Johnny. But if Johnny, he had to be on, on top of Johnny, other than that, he would let you in the gym. Why well, see Johnny in the, in the Caesar's Palace? Johnny, let me put your lottery ticket in. Let, let, I mean, let me put your Kino ticket in. Let me buy you something. Johnny said, he called me Mr. Gold. I used to wear a lot of gold. Yeah. He said, Mr. Gold, you can welcome me to the gym anytime you want to. Come down yes, there and yeah. train. So I used to train in Johnny mm. Taco's gym. It's a world famous gym mm. called Johnny Taco's gym. And that's where Muhammad Ali would yes. come in. He'd get in the ring with us and shatter box with us, mm. spar with us. He'd, he'd say, if you can hit me, I'm going to give you X amount of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Was you able to hit him? No, well, he pretty quick, pretty quick, pretty quick, pretty quick. Hey, Mike Tyson. Now, he came now, a little now, now, now Mike, later on. But, yep, uh, Mike come along in there when I was helping Tim Witherspoon and all them guys back in Vegas and stuff. He come through there. He come through there with like Custer, Custer Mata. See, Custer passed away right before Mike won that title. Custer passed away on him. But he, I was out there at the uh, Hilton Hotel when he knocked out Trevor Burbick. Yeah. Trevor Burbick, you thought he, he he was triple drunk. He got up, fell yeah. back down, got up, fell. They said, man, he's faking. I said, okay, you think he's faking? <laughs> he was a hard hitter. Yeah, he was a hard hitter. Yeah. And Mike, see all of us trained at Johnny yeah. Taco's gym. Mm -hmm. John, and Mike is a, mm, he's from the streets of yeah. Brooklyn and he's from the streets in there. And I used to train the fighter who fought him that he whooped on the streets named Blood Mr. Green. Mm -hmm. Mr. Green was a player. You know, he liked to have fun yeah. and do different things before he get it. But he was a good fighter. And him and Mike got into it mm -hmm. in the street fight. And Mike liked to tow half his head off. And one thing I love about Mike's story is somebody taking a vested interest in this troubled youth. Yeah. And then he becomes, you know, the heavyweight that. champion that he was. You do the same thing. You have a gym. What is the name of your gym? Big Sugar Ray's Real Deal Boxing Gym. Okay. Yes, and, sir. And what is some of the philosophy that comes from your gym? Well, see, uh, a lot of times I tell the kids, a lot of, have a lot of kids. Some, used to have a lot of kids in there. Now everything. I went back to Beverly Hills, tried to get my residuals. I, did, I do TV shows, too. Yes. With Cato Kalen, I did TV shows, 275 TV shows. Mm -hmm. I was a celebrity bailiff in a TV show. Anyway, but I try to get the kids to put them in the right direction. It takes a village to raise these kids yes. nowadays. You know, mm -hmm. you just can't do it. And that's what the, the one, of, one of the producers here, this show named Stan, mm -hmm. that's what we're trying to get now, trying to get us a federal grant, trying to get us a grant from Governor Abbott and them, well, we can help these kids regardless of race, creed, or color. These kids need some help from here. Yes. And then from right here. And then they have something. You can play baseball, football, be a doctor, be a lot, be what you want to, but you got to respect yourself. Yes. Other than that, you just bam, bam, bam. Like you hear kids nowadays, mm -hmm. one shot the other day in the school, 10 years old, someplace. Yeah. So 
if we can help these kids and we train them in boxing. Now we got somebody may teach him computer literacy. Got somebody else may teach him spiritual. Yes. See, you have all this in a nice, big, nice gym, but the government is funding all this because we you can't afford to do it. The rent is too, the rent is. Three thousand, five thousand. Well, those a month. are some of the things we can do to help the community there you go. as well. There, yeah, we yep, can reach some of these yep, kids yep. and and help out. Are you doing things right now? Uh, well, well, I'm working. I'm working with knockouts with Stan. Okay. We're doing trying to do some things right now. We're trying to get some get get something going. But like I say, it takes a lot. It takes a village to help raise. We do run exactly. a little fun over here, this over there, this over there. Now you get somebody to write the grants over here to try to help us, mm -hmm. to help these kids. Yes. So we can't turn down no kids regardless of race, creed, or color when they come in there because yes. we got government money. And we can hire, I can afford to go to Fort Worth. Don Curry, he used to be the welterweight champion of the world. Gene Hatch used to be junior welterweight champion of the world. Man, what are y'all doing? I'll show you right Come over to Dallas over there, man. I'll give you a little money to come over and help us with these kids. Mm -hmm. See, and them kids look up to people. They look up. Yes. They, 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 you, punch that, you punch that TV. That's my trainer right there. Yes. That make them feel good, yeah. Well, let me ask you a question, Big Sugar Ray. Go ahead. If, if there was one thing that you could leave to humanity, what would it be? Well, I would tell the kids, which I don't do it myself, don't do no dope, don't do that alcohol, take care of yourself, respect your mom, your pops, respect your preacher, and respect old, older peoples. Yes, sir, no, sir. That's yes. what I would teach them, how to respect people. Mm -hmm. If you give respect and you demand it back, Yes. But you got to give you got to give respect first, where you can demand respect back. Because these cheap kids today, ain't you, ain't you all is you? What are you talking about, my mm. man? What are you talking about, man? Come on, don't, come on, I'm real. Let me talk to you. Oh, sure. Like Greg right here. Here they, in Greg was fighting. I was fighting for the AU championship. One and on at the Bronco Bowl. Greg said, "Sugar, I was crying. You come to me." You bought me a hot dog and a Coke. Say, champ, champ, yeah, cheer up. Yeah. Greg, I didn't even remember. You know, I'm a grown Sometimes man, Greg. That yeah, one little thing. Yeah, can I'm, I'm a kid's up here. Life. You know, me and Greg, yes. you know, I'm up here, Greg. I was a grown man, you know, fighting. I was fighting top amateur fights, you know, open class, and Greg was fighting Pee Wee. But he said, man, you bought me a hot dog. I didn't even remember. He said, yes. man, you bought. He said, but y'all, I, I always see you help, help yes. them fighters yes. out because I had them backers. They, they would help me down in Mental Wells, Texas. So I, yeah, man. Big Try to, uh, to uplift them. It has been a pleasure. Let me tell you, I could probably talk to you for 24 hours, <laughs> but we have run out of time. Uh, I'd like to thank you for all that you do. And uh, if you were to look into the camera and just say a couple of words to the people that love you and that have followed you all of your career, what would it be? I appreciate all the support. All the people that followed me and helped me, like Mr. Paul Percival, people who, when I, when you're down, they raise you back up. Get up, 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 you're a better man than that. Come on, get, get on back up. See, that's what keep you on track. Other than that, you're going to be like several friends of mine from West Dallas, South Dallas, could have been super world champions. They're in the penitentiary, and some of them are dead right now. Because nobody would pick them back up. Yes. Once you fall in the mud, don't nobody want to reach. Guys, get up, get up. Well, come on, let me go run that shower and get, get, get yourself together. Mm. But they, they didn't do it. Me and Paul one time picked the middleweight champion of the world up named Quincy Taylor. Yes. He didn't appreciate it. We picked him up out of the mud. He's back yes. in the mud right now. Uh, but we picked him up out of the mud and made him a world champion. Yes. Made him a world champion. I did. Yes. But didn't appreciate it. Didn't appreciate it. It's a lot of them don't appreciate what you do for them. Yes. But you, we keep throwing the rope out there to try to help them. They say, man, come on in this house. Get out of that rain. Come on in this house right here. Come, yeah. yeah. G give you a lifeline. Yeah. Give you a lifeline. And that's what it's going to take for these grants. We're like Stan trying to get us these grants right now. This is what it's going to take. This way I can bring uh, Hollywood Henderson. I can bring uh, Tutal John. I can bring Tony down. Yeah, I know all, all, all of us come through the same area together. So they said, man, we need a little help over here to, you know, lift these kids. Kid might want to, he might not want to be a boxer. He might want to be a football player. Okay. He might want to be a basketball player. Let's get so-and-so, yes, so-and-so. Yeah, I, I know them all. Believe all me. Right. Thanks again. Yes, Appreciate sir. Appreciate it. Big Sugar Ray Phillips.
Thank you so much. I You're a good man. It. Appreciate you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> <laughs>